Okay, so we left off at the just the basic over, overview of the controller because we're inside the surveying lab, so if we started doing anything more, we'd get into my PowerPoint. My PowerPoint is just a basic user guide for surveying and stakeout, and it just covers it covers the steps of setup and then how you do the survey and the stakeout. So this is just tells you exactly what you need, gives you pictures of everything so you know what you're trying to find. Uh, instrument setup, uh, we've kind of we've already went over this, so we'll just get through that real quick. And then file setup, if you do a new new file, you uh, enter the file name, and you can double tap to bring up a virtual keyboard right there, and that just allows you to type in the file because it's only a like a 12 button controller. So uh, once you have the file set up, you can go to, do go to work, jobs and data, instrument settings, uh, users, which allows you to turn sound on or off. Uh, survey setup, so you go into setup, okay, so you, so you go into setup, hit set orientation, that zeroes the gun out on a point, um, so once you sight on your back sight, you zero out the gun, but don't tell it the back sight point that you're sighting on because it likes to overwrite coordinates for some reason, so just come up with a junk point, so if your back sight's 100, make the point you're staring at like 6, something that you know is not good. Uh, once you set zero, it zeroes the gun out on that, and then you can go to known back sight. So while you're setting the orientation in the back sight, it asks you for the station point. So you tell it uh, station point from job, tell it the job you're using, uh, the point ID that you're occupying, instrument height, and it'll pull the coordinates from the file that you've set it, put into the job or created for the job. Uh, once the once the instrument point is set, then you can go to setting the prism point. So the prism point on your set orientation is just going to be a junk point with a given with the target height of the prism. So if it's five foot, you put five foot. Six foot, six foot. Then it zeroes out the gun once you hit set. Uh, once you set your orientation, you go to known back sight, and you can actually give it the actual back sight ID. So if you're occupying point five and you're back sighting six, you tell it your back sighting six, and you tell it how tall the prism is. Then it computes the angle and the direction from there, and then your points that you do from survey survey from there will be correct in the file based on where your control is. And it's just as simple as once you have a clear target site to the prism, the gun will track it and shoot targets. Uh, as long as you have a clear sky view, the GPS will work. Uh, Bluetooth will work for the GPS no matter what, because the controller is less than 30 feet away from the sensor, and as long as you're within about a kilometer of the gun, the radio will still work. Um, the GPS though, if you, uh, the only thing you need to maintain, your, the only thing you have to have on your GPS is a clear sky view and a ground point so that you can maintain your desired 3D quality. Stakeout setup, uh, you start out like you were for surveying, do set orientation, known back site, same, same method, you pull the station point from the job. You set orientation the same way, uh, back sight set the same way, and then when you're in the stakeout, it asks you to choose from control job. You tell it the job you want to pull from, and then it'll give you a series of screens and lists and a map to pull points from, know where the gun's pointing, and, the and in this screen, it'll actually give you cut and fill, so if you have a target elevation you need to hit on your point, it'll tell you you need to come, come up, go down, and then it'll also give you a left and right. Um, when I was doing this, left, left and right updated as the gun tracked the prism, but going to or coming away from the gun didn't update because it wouldn't, for some reason, do a continuous track on the prism as far as range away from the gun went. So sometimes you'll have to hit distance to get a new distance to the gun each time. So let's say it tells you you're 20 feet away from your point, so you pace in four to five paces, that gets you within, you know, two or three feet of the point, hit distance, come in another pace, and then as soon as you're within about a foot of the target left and right and front to, and towards or away from the gun, it switches to a crosshair and shows you where the prism's at. Uh, if you try and follow the arrows on this, the arrows are orientated to the north arrow right there on the, on the screen, so it's it's very odd at how it picks north because if you set up on point three and north's behind the gun, it'll show an arrow telling you to come towards the gun even if you have to go away. 
So just need to keep things like that in mind when you're using it. It's orientated to the north arrow and not constantly updating range. Um, you can pick the points from a list of all the points you have in the job, or you can give it a, get it in the map. And in the map, you'll see a dotted line from the gun. And that dotted line will move as you walk around the gun. As, and it tracks the prism. Um, stakeout, just as simple as that. So as long as you keep moving and keep a good line of sight with the prism, you can stake a point, or if you've got a good enough sky view to do it with the GPS, you can do it with the GPS, but same things apply with the GPS. Got to have a proper number of satellites and a ground point for it. Uh, the controller GUI information up here is your target, target lock, uh, target type, so you can do standard prisms, mini prisms, the 360 degree prism, reflector list, uh, there's a, you can access the EDM function there that allows you to do continuous tracking, fast tracking, all sorts of things. Uh, it even allows you to average the point, so it'll take multiple shots on a point and then average the distance to give you an even tighter point. Total station plummet. This allows you to switch back and forth between which instrument you're using currently. This is the total station currently, but if you pressed it, it would go to the GPS sensor. Uh, you can access the camera from here. You can access the point list and map from here. This gives you controller, li controller battery life and the instrument battery life. And then when you're in the GPS mode, this gets changed to the GPS function, so you'd see a satellite with a satellite with a number of satellites that should be tracking. This would also turn into a sky plot, so you could s press that, tell you the number of satellites that would be overhead at any given time, and this would be your ground point information over here. And beyond that, these other features allow for like sticking spoil pot, uh, surveying spoil piles really quickly, inversing between points really quickly in the controller. So if you stake two points out that you know are supposed to be like two feet apart, but you're looking at them and you can see it's like six or eight feet, you can inverse in the controller and find out whether or not your file's wrong, just like that. Take a tape out there just for good backup. And then this is the list of available targets. So you've got the 360 prism, the small prism, mini prism, mini 360, uh, reflector tape, round prism, reflector list isn't shown on here, but it is available further down in the controller, and that's it.